Good morning, and welcome to Park Church's online virtual service. We have just one announcement today before we start the service, and that is that there will be a Zoom coffee hour today at 11.15. So if you did not receive the email and you need the information, uh, please contact us via this site or email, and we'll make sure that you get the information uh, before the coffee hour starts. Take a moment now to reflect on Psalm 66, verses 16 through 20. Please join me in the call to worship. Bless the Lord, O people, sing. Let the sound of praise ring out. Come and hear what the Lord has done, the Lord who made everything. Let us pray. Loving God, in whom we live and move and have our being, help us to choose life in you that we may keep the commands of Jesus, follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and witness to the hope that is within, within us, sharing Christ's love in the world. Amen. Friends in Christ, God not only asks us to repent, but also assures us of forgiveness. Therefore, let us confess our sins to the one who is steadfast love. Please read along and join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, we do not always keep your commandments. We fail to love you. Our conscience is not clear. Wash us in the water of life that we may live again through the grace and mercy of Jesus our resurrected Savior. Amen. Friends, God forgives, restores, and strengthens us through the risen Lord. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Come, Holy Spirit, our helper and advocate, Open our hearts and minds this day 
entice us with your presence. Spark us with a word of life and a message that we may share with others as we seek to live Christ's love in the world. We ask this in the name of Christ who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Let us quiet our hearts and hear God's word. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am the Father, and, in, in, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. This week, and in my studies in preparation for this sermon, I learned two new words, peregrination and parkali. Both words intrigued me and brought me to great contemplation for several days and to some new self-realizations of what we're all going through during these pandemic times and how we are responding. Peregrination means leaving one's homeland and wandering for the love of God, or as Reverend Jess Cat described it. She said it's a quest, it's a wandering, or even an adventure to discover one's true self in the love of Christ. I think many of us are living in our own peregrination as we wander through our lives, searching for ourselves in the love of Christ during this time of crisis and unsure in the world. Sometimes I stop and I ask myself, what will happen next and what will be my role? The second word that I mentioned is paraclete. And this is the name that Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit. In later versions, this was the word that was translated as advocate a word that means comforter, to advocate for, or one who walks with you. I find that both of these words are fun words. I still struggle sometimes with pronouncing them, but they fit in my headspace right now. They fit in what I am going through in life. In today's gospel lesson, the mood tends to be sad. Jesus is in the middle of a long discord where he's preparing his disciples for death, for his resurrection, and for his ascension. In our readings over the past few weeks, 
We have watched the disciples beginning to experience separation anxiety as Jesus, the man they left everything for, is preparing to leave. They have feelings of confusion and anger and disruption and even abandonment. They had no source of income and they were far away from the security and the comfort of their homes, their families, or what was most familiar to them. When we're feeling lost in our lives or feel that we're about to lose something important to us, we typically start to worry. And all the what-ifs start to come into play. We, just like the disciples, become disagreeable, and sometimes we even feel desperate or depressed. These are natural human feelings. I'm sure the disciples were feeling anxious as they lived their lives in those last moments with Jesus. There was so much unsurety. As I look in the current mood in the world today, and in this nation, and in this state, and even our own little village of Newark, I see people who are anxious and worried and depressed and lonely and scared. There's not a day that goes by that I don't read or hear a sad story. Stories about a loved one and about losing a loved one, or the loss of someone's job due to layoff or resizing. I've heard stories about folks who were questioning where their next meal might be coming from. Indeed, it's a sad time. So sad that after these past weeks, I was even starting to feel a little down. But then I ran across a bright spot, a moment when a pastor was joyfully giving encouragement to fellow pastors and introducing a new word to her, which is one of my new words this week, peregrination. And as I contemplating the meaning of that word, I realized that we're all on a journey right now. We're all on a spiritual quest with Christ and each of us having a different role to play and a different way to contribute to each other's journeys. In this pandemic time, each of us has challenges and experience these challenges on many different levels and some will feel a much greater challenge than others. And most of us are probably thinking, what are we supposed to do? And this is where peregrination comes into play. This is where our journeys with Christ to find Christ's love comes into play. I don't think any of us are facing challenges that we consider right now an adventure if we choose to look at it that way, which is one of the words that describes peregrination, especially as some of us face hardship and the loss of work and income. But I think about how God provides for us in our good times and in our bad times. And maybe it can become an adventure if we choose to let that happen. My friend in her post, she presented enthusiasm and she embraced peregrination and it shifted my mind process. It made me realize that in this journey, we are together. I don't think anyone's going to starve if we all pay attention to everyone's needs. We could pool our resources and our food together to get through those difficult moments. And I think the same is true for shelter. It may be uncomfortable for a while, but if we all pull together, we can get through this. So much of this depends on the attitudes that we play out and our willingness to help someone who is down, our willingness to be at the same level. A friend posted this week on Facebook speaking about how the challenges that people face 
are really riding on some of his friends who have addictions. He discussed how some of his friends with addictions are coping during these difficult times and how they're fighting to maintain their sobriety. This particular friend has over 25 years of being sober and he credits his success to having a good attitude and a positive outlook. And he said that he was tired of the negative attitude and the blame games that were happening predominantly through social media and all the posts that are blaming and looking and pointing fingers in one direction or another. He said those negative posts are not productive. And he was tired of those negative posts and the blame games that were predominantly happening throughout every aspect of his social media. And he challenged everyone to change the direction of their negative attitudes to positive attitudes. He changed that by simply asking one question. And the question was, what are y'all doing? Tell me all of the positive things that are happening in your life right now. And he encouraged people to post these positive things and to share their wins. He encouraged everyone to stay away from the shaming, the blaming, and the negativity. Last time I looked at the post, there were 115 responses of positive things that people were doing in their life. And there was no room in this post for all the negativity. People were helping people. People were ramping up their volunteering, and they were checking in on others. Those who were more fortunate were offering to help those who were less fortunate by giving money and food and rides or gas to people who needed the help. Many said that they were finding new hobbies or reconnecting with old hobbies, such as planting flowers and creating new music or reading books. The whole exercise was great, and it was very positive. As I read through the responses, I felt enriched and motivated to be more positive in my own life and in my own post. So think about it for a second. And now I'll ask his question. What are y'all doing? What positive things has come out of this pandemic? What positive things are you embracing and doing to make it better? Many who answered the question on that post reported that they were checking off things to do on their to-do list. Things they seemed they never had time for in the past. Others spoke to the things that they were doing to help others. For me, personally, the pandemic has brought more focus and structure into my life. The everyday mundane things that I took for granted, like shopping every other day, have become more focused. So now I shop every 10 days to two weeks, freeing up my time to do things that I normally wouldn't have time for. I become a better planner of my time. I have more of it, and my time is being used more productively. This pandemic has caused me to repurpose my life, to think about how I'm doing things and how I could be more inclusive to others. It's given me the opportunity to think beyond myself even more. It's opened my eyes. It's opened my eyes to the needs that are present right here in this community. Things that used to frustrate the hell out of me are becoming less of an issue because I've come to appreciate the small things and realize there are bigger needs out there, much bigger than my own personal needs. This stay-in-place mode has made me more self-aware of others' needs and of others' feelings. This pandemic has forced me to look at my grace factors and become more aware of people who need more grace 
and who need more mercy in their lives. Things that I felt were important are becoming less important as I address the issue and the needs of others. Those who need help and attention or just a coping, listening ear to what is going on in their lives. In this time, we need to show each other love, Christ's love, in true and genuine ways. We need to share God's love and God's mercy with all people. We need to be the listening ears on the ground, even if we don't always agree. We need to show Christ's love and support with no judgment. In today's lesson, in verse 16, Jesus promised the disciples would leave them, Jesus promised the disciples that he would leave them a helper, an advocate, a paraclete, so they would never be alone. Now remember, the paraclete is the name that Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit. And on any given day, you or I may be acting as the paraclete for someone in their life, as their comforter or their supporter. The Holy Spirit is the nameless and most mysterious part of the Trinity and is still with us very much today. The Holy Spirit still acts in our lives every day and in every moment. The Holy Spirit is that small voice that comes into us, into our hearts, and into our minds when we're feeling troubled, lost, or lonely. The Holy Spirit is there for us when we are feeling a sense of loss to comfort us and to guide us. When we're feeling discouraged or scared, the Holy Spirit is there, reassuring us. When we see someone who is hurting or upset, and we don't feel like we know how to help, and then suddenly the right words begin to flow from our mouths to comfort that person, that is, my friends, the Holy Spirit. In these times, we need to be there for each other, we need to be on the lookout for those who may fall through the cracks or be cast aside to act as their comforter and supporter. Reverend Denner Den Ray Mueller said it really well when she said, we are members of the family of Christ, protected eternally by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus tells us, she said, I will not leave you orphaned. Jesus promised that we will not be onlookers to a love that we cannot possess. Instead, Jesus said, come in and join. The family is gathered and your place is reserved. As members of the family of Christ, we must not leave anyone on the outside looking in. We all know the phrase, what you do for the least of these, you do for me. Just as Jesus has not left us orphaned, we too must be our brother's keeper. Does your intimate circle include those who are orphaned or disenfranchised or abandoned by the world? Jesus also tells us that we should keep his commandments. In Matthew, we are told that the greatest of these commandments is to love, to love God and to love thy neighbor. No matter what happens, what goes wrong, how remote God seems from us, Jesus assures us that we have a parkalete, a helper in the Holy Spirit that will always be with us. As long as we love God and our neighbors and keep his commandments, he and the Holy Spirit will always be with us. We will always be part of the family of Christ. So I'll close with these two questions. How will you be a parkalete in someone's life today?
How will you proceed on your journey with Christ and share his love? Amen. Our prayers of the people today are call and response. I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you can respond at home saying, hear our prayer. We pray for all who search for you. May they find their way in you. Bless us with lips that sing your praise and live to tell the stories of all that you have done for us. Open our eyes to find you among us as we share your love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are oppressed by government or institutions, for those whose voices are not heard or believed, for those with no one on their side. Bless us with a joy for justice and the strength to preserve as we work towards your coming realm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who are hungry and those who worry each day on how they will care for their families. Bless us all with meaningful work and fill us with good things as we love and care for each other and find sus substance in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer the violence and scars of war, for all soldiers and their families, and for all who live and serve in war-torn places. Grant them courage in the face of fear. In times of trouble, do not let their feet slip. Bless us, O oh God, with your version of peace, for you made us one family by giving life and breath to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who are affected with COVID, for all frontline workers. May God be with them in their illness and in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray now for any prayers that you may have typed on the screen or that you hold deep in your heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, we remember before all who have died. And we pray for all who will die today, that they may know your peace. Bless us with the gift of faith, that we may know you and that we may love you and enjoy eternal life that you shared with us. 
and hear, O oh God, as we join our voices to say the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is now the segment where we normally take our offerings. Please, if you feel like you want to give an offering, mail it into the church. And now, friends, God has heard you and given heed to your prayers. Therefore, go in peace to serve Christ and to always be eager to do what is good. May God, who creates, redeems, and sustains, keep you steadfast in faith, buoyant in hope, and abounding in love. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always, today and forevermore. Amen.